Uh, Bishop, uh, God bless you. God bless you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. And I want to thank you especially for the opportunity and for availing yourself for God to use you to uh, minister to millions around the world. You know, sometimes when you are speaking to one person, you know, the message doesn't stay with the person. It moves from the person to another person and to another person. So that's exactly what your messages has been doing in the lives of many people around the world. And I believe that there are many people on this platform uh, who are in different countries around the world. I am in Norway. Uh, at the moment, it's past 10 here. And uh, I'm sure there are also those in US, in Canada, in South Africa, in many countries around the world. So it's like a, a global ministry that <laughs> the Lord through you has uh, started and uh, we are proud to be part of it. Amen. So I thank you for the opportunity uh, to you and to also to your family, uh, your wife as well. God bless you so much. And I also want to thank each and everyone uh, that is on the platform. Uh, I, first, I want to begin by giving a testimony just to thank God for the many things that he has done in my life. As for Sofu, we met in South Africa and we were doing the ministry together. So he has been my boss in South Africa and he's still my boss. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and uh, recently I applied for my family to be moved to Norway to come and live with me. And uh, I work with uh, UNICEF, United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. So one of my colleagues was telling me he, 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 had, he had already applied for his family to come and for two years, he hasn't received anything. So when I applied, I was thinking that then that means that if for two years now, you have not received your response, then I'm sure I should expect mine in the next three years to come before they respond. You know, Mercy. but we, we serve the God of grace. Hallelujah. Yeah, so this my friend is in Jehovah Witness and uh, my colleague at work. Uh, so when, the, when I applied, it was on the 17th of October last year. Was it 17th of October? Uh, and by 6th of November, from 17th to 6th of November, it's about barely about three weeks or less than that. We, we, we had received our response that it has been granted and all the family are allowed to move here in a way. And um, as we speak now, by the grace of God, they are uh, they arrived today and they are uh, in Papa hotel. Wow. Uh, so I just want to thank God for that. My friend was asking me, what happened, Mike? How come in less than three weeks you got your response and mine for more than two years? I said, when grace is working, we see a group. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just the grace of God. Uh, thank God. I believe that it's also because of the prayer of the saints, including Amen. you that is listening to me. And I'm sharing this testimony for you to understand that God that we serve, whenever we meet here, the presence of God is here. Amen. And when you, you are here in the right atmosphere, you will definitely receive something from the Lord. Amen. 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 I, I want to talk to you. It's, it's what I'm going to talk about is very important. Also, for, I have how many minutes about... Um, Bishop. Yes, it's 8.40. So we have up to 9.40. Okay. Let's so. say, yeah, so maybe in the next 40 minutes, I should be done. Then also you can take over. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to talk to you about something that is very important in the kingdom of God. And I, be, I, I believe that if you understand this message, it will transform your life. And uh, you, 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 you begin to see God in a different atmosphere or in a different level. Uh, it's something the Lord dawned on my heart some about three or four, you know, five weeks ago. I was supposed to preach in a church of Pentecost in Bergen, which is the second biggest city in Norway. And I preached this message there, but I didn't finish. But God has also transformed this message again. Here, God is giving me a different topic to talk on. It's the same message, but in a different dimension. And I'm going to talk to you about the secret to receive in the kingdom of God. 
I believe that sometimes uh, many of us, we pray and we trust God for a breakthrough, but sometimes it becomes very difficult. And we tend to think that maybe God doesn't exist. Maybe God didn't, uh, doesn't listen to prayers, or maybe there is something wrong with me. And so there are so many questions that we begin to ask ourselves. And, and uh, we begin to uh, 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 puzzle with our mind. What is happening to me? What, how come my prayers are not answered? I've been expecting to receive something from God for more than a year or two, but nothing is happening. What is happening to my life? Does this God even exist? I, 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 sometimes you begin to doubt yourself because of the things that you go through. And I believe that tonight, by the grace of God, we will understand one of the secrets because there are many secrets to receive in the kingdom of God. It's not just one, there are many. But today I'm just going to share one of them with you. And I believe that through the Holy Spirit, you will understand it. I'm talking about the secret to receive in the kingdom of God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Let me read verses 14. The Bible says, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents of money. To another, two talents. And to another, one talent each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The same story is also found in the book of Luke chapter 19, verses 12 coming down. Uh, I read that one also. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come. So here, Jesus was talking to the disciples and the people around about the kingdom of God. And there are many things that we can learn from this. And one of them is the secret to receive in the kingdom of God, meaning that in this kingdom of God, there are secrets by which we can receive from God. If you are expecting something, you are also expected sometimes to have certain responsibilities and those responsibilities will unlock what you are looking for or what you are expecting God to do in your life. Until you unlock it, you will still find yourself wanting and still be praying. And so here Jesus was telling the disciples that the kingdom of God can be likened to a man who traveled to a distant country. So you see that in the two uh, uh, books, that is Matthew and Luke, they are all talking about a man who traveled. In Luke, Luke said that he called 10 of his servants. But when you come to Matthew, Matthew never mentioned the number of servants that were called. Matthew said that he called his servants and then he gave them talents. Now, Luke is saying 10. Now, when you get to the end part of Luke, when it came to the time of accountability, we saw that only three came to give an account. But the Bible said that he called those that he gave the talents to, to come and give an account, which means that even though in Luke, he called 10, he gave the talents to only three of his servants. It means that not every servant in the, according to the Luke version received something, but others received. In the book of Matthew, it's saying that the, the, the master called his servant and then he gave them talents. He gave them gifts. He gave them something. It's according to his ability. 
The secret here is according to their abilities. It means that your ability becomes a determining factor to you receiving from God. For you to receive from the master, the master is looking at the ability in you. Without ability in you, you don't qualify to receive. Because the master is, is, is a good investor. He does not just give to people, but he invests in abilities and not in people. <laughs> Somebody said, God does not listen to prayers, but God listens to the person praying. Meaning that it is not because I am praying, that is why God is for listen, but it is because I am in the right stand to pray. And so when you are praying and you are not in that position, in the right stand, then you will not be able to receive. The Bible says that he gave to each and every one according to their abilities. Now, the question I ask myself is that, how did this master get to know the abilities? Remember, these are servants of the master, and they are all working for him. And because they are working for him, he has been able to identify each and every one according to their abilities. You see, the funny thing is that, all of them receive the same instructions every day from the master. All of them, they work in the same farm. Beloved, we are all here in the house of God. We all receive the same message every now and then from the house of God. We go to church every day. They preach to all of us every day. We all take the blood and the, and, and, and the body of Christ. We share in the Lord's Supper. How come that? They all receive the same instructions. They all enjoy the same resources from the master, but they don't have the same abilities. That means that your presence in the house of God does not necessarily mean that you receive the same thing from the Lord. What have you done with the opportunities that he has offered unto you? You want to receive something else from God. You are praying that, God, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this breakthrough. But the question is, what have you done with the ability that is in you? How have you used the resources? These are servants receiving the same instructions. We all meet here every Sunday. We receive from a, a, a bishop and other pastors. We receive the same message. But what have you done with the message that you receive? You are expecting God for a marital breakthrough. But maybe perhaps you receive a message that God was telling you to donate something to someone. And inside you, you had that ability because in your account you had the money. But you decided not to do it. Yet you expect the same master to give you another gift. He invests in abilities. What do you do with the resources? What do you do with the mentorship that you receive from the master? Somebody will say, well, for me, I don't have an ability. Are you able to talk? That means you have an ability. Anything you are able to do is an ability. Are you able to sing? It means it is an ability. There are many of us, we find ourselves in the house of God, and then we think that, oh, when I sit back and I allow the world, they should do it, that is humility. No, you are only hiding an ability, and that will prevent the master from giving you more. Sometimes we, it, it has happened to me before. I go to a place, I know I can do this. 
and I see people doing it and they are not doing it well. I know I have that ability. I can be an usher. I can clean very well. Maybe I can sing. Maybe I can play some piano. Maybe I can play some instrument. Maybe I am good at talking, at motivating, encouraging people. But I am hiding behind the scene. Oh, media, this shows that I'm very humble. That is not humility. In fact, that is being stubborn. Because God gives you an opportunity to make use of the ability. The master got to know the ability because he gave them the chance to work in his vineyard. And when they are working, the master was watching them, watching them, watching them. As we sing, as we come here, as we sing, as we do things, as we go back home, the message we receive, he's watching. And then he look at this person, oh, this person, oh, he's putting his ability into use. And listen, beloved, it is not just one ability. The Bible says he gave according to their abilities. So the more abilities you have, the more you, have, you, 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 are, you receive. And so as you put the abilities into use, it is not enough to have the ability inside you, but you have to put that ability into use. Beloved, maybe if you had started singing with the voice that you have, you know yourself that you are able to, maybe if you had put that thing in you into use, that what you are praying for would have perhaps come by now. What you are seeking the master to do for you, the door you are seeking the master to open for you, perhaps if you had put the little ability into use, the master would have opened the other door for you. The question is, why do people not willing to put their abilities into use? Sometimes some of us, we are not putting our ability into use because we think that that is a sign of humility. But beloved, it's not a sign of humility. In fact, it's like I said, it's just being stubborn because your master gives you, um, do, why do you think he took you into that place? Why do you think the master has opened that opportunity for you? It's because he wants you to put that ability into use. And then you are saying, no, I want to be humble. Some of us, we are not able to put our ability into use. It's because we are always focusing on the negative things. If you read the Matthew account, I will not read there. The Bible says that when the time of reckoning came, one of the servants who did not put his ability into use, he was given one talent, and then he undermined the gift that God gave him because he thinks it's too small. And the reason why he didn't do it is because he said that he didn't do it because the master is wicked and that he harvests where he did or he doesn't sow. Meaning that this guy, you know your master was wicked. You have been working in his vineyard, so you have identify some negative aspect of the master. Some of us, we sit in the house of God and all we see is negatives. Anytime we close from church and we are walking away, all we are talking about, oh, this person didn't sing well. This person didn't do things well. Ah, they don't know how to do this. They are not doing things well. This pastor is too, uh, whatever. He is the only one that is always preaching. Because our focus has always been on the negatives. And that is why we are not putting our ability into use. Anytime you are focusing on others, you fail to use what is inside you. The guy did not focus on the opportunity that God has given him. His focus was on the negative aspect. Of and funny enough, while he was focusing on the negative aspects of the master, the, some of us also, the reason we don't put our abilities is because we think that we undermine what we have inside us. But you see, the secret about the master is that, you see, the Bible said that the master said, you lazy, 
a wicked servant. Meaning that the master knew the guy was lazy, but the master did not focus on his negative, his weaknesses. God understands your weaknesses. He knows your weakness, yet he has given you an opportunity because if, in spite of your weaknesses, God still sees certain ability in you and he wants you to use that ability in spite of your weaknesses. Some of us, we undermine ourselves because of the weaknesses that we see in us. And so it, we fail to focus on our abilities. We fail to use our abilities because our focus has always been undermining ourselves. Beloved, I want you to understand that in spite of your weakness, God knows you. The Bible said that a woman was caught in adultery. And that was early in the morning, and they brought him to Jesus. Now, when they brought this woman to Jesus, the Bible says that those who brought the woman to Jesus, they were the scribes and the Pharisees. They brought this woman to Jesus. And then they said that according to the law of Moses, remember, the law of Moses was written by the finger of God. Meaning that you, Jesus, you are, you call yourself God because you say you are a son of God means you are God. You make yourself equal with God. Meaning that you know something about it. You were there when God was writing with his finger the commandments, according to the commandments. This is what we are supposed to do. What do you say? The Bible says that the same finger that wrote the commandment, the same finger began to write a new law on the ground. The same finger. God knows your weakness. He knows. He knows your weakness. He knows. He called you in spite of your weakness. In spite of your weaknesses, he still called you. The same God who came to die for you, even the Bible says, while we were wallowing in sin, Christ Jesus came to die for us. At a time when we're doing things that were detestable to him, that was when we qualified for his grace because of sin. It is because of sin. That is why we are in the presence of God. The woman is in the presence of God, not because she's holy, but because of sin. She qualified to be there. Why? Because she's a sinner. And the same finger that wrote the commandment, the Bible said, this finger of God, Jesus began to wrote, oh, what a mighty God we serve. He is still writing. The same God is still writing. Hallelujah. Yes, God said Hallelujah. many years ago that yes, when a woman is caught in adultery, this is what you are supposed to do. But this, what is God saying now? What is he writing now? He wrote it, but now what is he writing? He is writing something different. He is writing that his grace is in abundance for you in spite of your weakness. But some of us are like the Pharisees and the scribes and the, 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 and the teachers of the law. The Bible says that Jesus said, he who is without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone. This, look at what happened. Sin brought the woman to the presence of Jesus. But the same sin is taking some people away from the presence of Jesus. The Bible says that all of them, when he said that he who is without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone. It means that to be in the presence, you have to be without sin. But here is a woman with sin and still in the presence of Jesus. And the others began to walk away because they look into themselves and they saw sin. Some of us are walking away from the presence of God because we think we have sinned. But we forgot that we are in the presence of he who can write something new for you today. They walk away, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. 
Some of us, we think that we know the word. We know. So the word, the same word that we know has become a slave to us and it is enslaving our lives. We think we don't qualify for forgiveness of God. And so you are walking away. You have failed to be in the presence of God for some time now. Why? Because of something you think you have done. The teachers and the, and the Pharisees, the scribes, those who know the law. The Bible says Jesus said, he who is without sin, let him be the first. And the Bible says they all began to walk away from the elders to the least. Everyone will walk away. And the Bible says that it was left with Jesus alone and the woman in the midst, in the midst of what? In the midst of the presence of God. Yeah. Beloved, in spite of your weakness, if you will not undermine yourself, if you will not allow what happened in the past, yes, it is understood. Yes, according to the law, it is written. But the same finger that wrote that uh, commandment, the same finger is writing something new today. In spite of your weakness, the master is still willing to work with you. In spite of the sin that you think you have committed, the master is so willing to work with you. Don't allow the things of the past to undermine you, putting your ability to use. Remember, the master does not reward servants. He only gives or he only invests in abilities. That is why he called 10, but only three. It means that the three had certain abilities and each of them had different abilities. Beloved, some of us, we think that I am doing it too, I'm doing too much. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I think others can help me. I can't, I'm, this is too much for me. Remember, the more you put your abilities into use, the more you receive. Yeah. Yeah. Don't allow the work that you are doing in the house of God and think uh, to be too much for you. As long as you have the ability, as long as you have the time, the ability, put it in use. Because the more you use your abilities, the more you receive. There is something that you are seeking God for. Beloved, I believe that God is speaking to you now. That there is something that you are praying and trusting God for. But God is telling you that there is some ability. I want you to, I want to see you putting this ability, maybe singing. Maybe you are somebody who gives. Maybe you are somebody who works with in the house of God cleaning. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be something big. But you know that there is certain abilities into you or in you. If you will start putting that ability into use. God will open a new door for you. Hallelujah. Now, beloved, you see, something that happened. Amen. Amen. You see, something happened here. The Bible says that this man went away. He gave somebody five. He gave somebody two. He gave somebody one. But the funny thing is that he gave them the same time for accountability. <laughs> In reality, the one who had one talent should have celebrated because he has enough time to put that one ability because it's not too much. But he was the very one that was complaining. And those who are doing a lot, they never complained. God, why? You have made me to be preaching here. I have to preach here. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. But this guy, he, has, he should have complained. This guy has nothing. He has only one. Why didn't you give him more? Because he, he gave him more so that I can also be a little bit free. But this guy never complained. In spite of the fact that, oh God, it's like writing an exams. I remember back uh, when I was in high school in Ghana. And it was physics. Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, SSE. And usually those days they used to have these practicals and then you do the practicals and then later you come and do the uh, written exams or something like that. And at that time, yeah. the school where I was, they had only one- Again? 
they had only one pendulum, which they needed for their practicals. And schools in maybe Prempen, maybe uh, this uh, top, top schools in Ghana, for example, usually they have more than what they need. But this, my village school, had only one. And then when the exam starts, the same time that they gave to the one in my former school, Afman, the same time for those in big time schools who have more than, I mean, the number of students have, uh, uh, for, for the exams or for the practicals, each one has what, a, a pendulum, but they have all been given the same time to write the same exams. And so I remember I was not a science student, but uh, my colleagues who were there told me about it and they had to form a queue. <laughs> And some of them did not even get the opportunity to hold the pendulum and even to use it. Yet they were writing the same SSE. Beloved, these guys, one was giving five, the other was giving one. So the one who was giving five, it should have complained, Master, since you have given me five and this one one, then if you are giving us five months, I think mine should be multiplied to five so that I'll be able to use. But the master gave them the same time for reckoning. Beloved, sometimes we complain over things that we shouldn't complain. The more of the abilities you are putting into use, the more you receive. The master gave them gifts and then he left. After giving them the gifts, he left. The giver of the gift was not there, but the gift was available for use. The giver of the gift was not there, but the gift was available. It's something that we have to also learn here. The giver of the gift was not available. Does it mean that I can find myself in a place where the gift is working, but the giver of the gift, the presence of the giver is not there? It's a question. Sometimes it's, 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 it's mind uh, uh, blowing that you find people who are manifesting, they may be using the, the gift, but how is the presence of the giver of the gift being manifested? The presence of the giver is reflected in your character. You may have the gift, but how is the presence of the giver of that gift being manifested in your character? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 talks about that. It talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we have the fruits, we have the gift. You may have the gift, but how is the presence? Because the presence is seen in the fruits. The fruits of a tree determines the kind of fruit it is. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Beloved, remember that fruits are not eaten by the tree itself, but fruits are meant for outsiders. When there is a tree and it has fruit, it is people who have to come and pluck the, the, the fruits and eat. Does your presence promote peace? The Bible talks about the fruits of the spirit as peace. There is peace, there is love, there is long suffering, patience, joy. And so when people are looking for joy, do they find joy in you? Or when they come to you, they go back in sorrow. 
You may have the gift, but are you, do you have the presence of the giver of the gift? How is your relationship with the presence of the giver? How is it reflected in your character? Very important. The Bible says that he gave gifts to them. He went away. In fact, you see, if, Osofo, if I give Osofo a gift, like a car, and every day I am the one still driving the car, there is no more a gift. <laughs> My absence even shows that it is a gift. It is a gift because I, I, am, I don't have it anymore. I've given it to you. And that's how God gives his gifts. But it is up to you to have him part of it. Some of us may have the gift, but the presence of the giver. Mm. Mm. The presence of the giver. And I said that the presence is reflected in our character. There is a difference between the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Maybe because of your abilities in the past, you have received a gift from the master. And now you think you have grown horns because you think that the gift is working. And that is why sometimes people have the gift, they go and come home, they do what they have, and they still come and demonstrate in the power and they still think that, oh, I'm still in the right time. Why? Because the gift is working. But he forgets that the presence. The anointing. The anointing. <laughs> Beloved, you also need the presence of the Holy Spirit. And like I said, the presence is reflected in our character. In the next five minutes, I will hand over to Osofo. But I'm asking you, how are you putting your ability into use? We are all in the same vineyard. We receive the same resources from the master. We receive the same message. We receive the same mentorship. It, aside that the master has given us opportunity and that the, the house of God, he has given you opportunity. He gave them resources. He gave them time to put the, 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 the abilities into use. He gave them mentorship, instructions. Every day you are receiving the word of God on radio, uh, in, in, in these meetings, in your own church. But how are you putting those resources that you are receiving, the mentorship, the instruction into use? Beloved, if you get to know how to put that ability into use, if you will start using that ability, I can assure you, it will open a door to receive another from the master. Jesus was teaching the disciples one of the secrets of receiving, and that is according to your ability. Remember, the master does not reward people, but he rewards abilities. And that is why he caught them. But three received something because they are putting their abilities into use. I don't know how much of an ability you have in you. But I know you are able to talk, it's an ability. I know you are able to sing, it's an ability. I know you are able to pray, it's an ability. Maybe you start praying for people, it's an ability. Maybe you are somebody who likes to donate, to give, to help people, the poor, the needy, it's an ability. Maybe you are somebody who is good at motivating, it's an ability. Anything that you are able to do is an ability. If you can put that thing that you are able to do, whenever you have that opportunity, many of us, God speaks to us in the church. We get there. God is telling you, join the choir, but you have failed to do it. God has been speaking to you. He wants to reward you more, more. He, he, he wants to reward you. Some of us too, we, we have received something 
And we don't know that there is more to receive. You see, the master is full of gifts. He is full, full inside him are gifts. And he's looking for people that are putting their abilities into use so that he will give them. And some of us, we are satisfied with what we have. But if you open up more, you receive more. Beloved, I believe that there are many secrets to receive. But this is just one that God wants me to share with you. That he rewards abilities. We are talking about Jesus coming to die for us. But what are we doing with what we have in us? How are we putting the resources? How are we putting the mentorship that we are receiving from him into use? I believe that if you will start using the abilities in you, God will open new doors for you. God bless you. And I pray that God from today will strengthen you and empower the abilities in you so that from today, you will start putting your abilities into use. God bless you. Osofo, I hand over. God bless you so much, Osofo, for such uh, useful and powerful reminders. But you know, may God help us to utilize our abilities. Yes, in Jesus' name. Thank you. But you know, over here, once you have the microphone, you also pray with us. So please take about 10 minutes to uh, lead us in prayer too. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, beloved. Uh, thank you, Bishop. Okay, so we will just go, go in the presence of God. I just want you to begin to thank God for the word that you have received. Just begin to thank God for the word. Just begin to thank God. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Oh, begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. 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 We give you praise for your word. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that we have received, that you have deposited certain abilities in us. Ah, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Ah, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for your word that we have received. Beloved, we are praying since we don't have a lot of time. One thing we have to understand is that God has deposited something in you. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 that the Bible said, and God blessed them. He blessed them. God blessed them. The man and the woman. So God has already blessed you with certain abilities. We are praying. First, we are praying that God help me to discover the abilities in me. I, I want to see the abilities that I have in, in me, irrespective of how small it is, irrespective of how undermining in the sight of people it may be. I want to, to, to see that ability so that I can start using that ability in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Father, Allah we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit ourselves in your hands, O oh Lord. First, we pray that, Lord, we forgive us for our failing to put our abilities into use. Ah, forgive us, O oh Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus, forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us, O Lord. Ring <laughs> <laughs> 
the rain of forgiveness to God. Let it rain over our lives to God. Ratole be sede be ha, ratole be kapa, ratole be kapa, rapaya la bada bada ba, rakala bada ba, rako amala ba ya, rapaya la bo sede be kapa, rako padia sede be kapa, le kapadia shala badia kapa, ulos be kapa, ratole be kapa la bada ba, rake be kapa, libaya la ba sata la bade ya, rako padia sudi be kapa, loko padia ba sa. The rain of forgiveness of God, Likara Badia Bada Sitelebia, Ratala Bada 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 Bada, Ratala Bada 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 Bada, Likatala Bada 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 Bada, Rakuria Badia Tala Bada Bada, Likada Bada 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 Bada, Likato Levesia, Likada Bada 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 Bada, Ratala Bada Bada, the glory of God is brighter than the sun of God. Thank you, beloved. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. Some of us, all we need is an opportunity to put our abilities in use. I am sure some of us, we 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 have, we know we have.